Adamawa, a state in the northeast geopolitical zone of Nigeria, is one with a very rich and diverse cultural heritage as it boasts over a hundred ethnic groups. The state, also known as the Land of Beauty, is home to an estimated 4.25 million people as of 2016. Hadiza Banu is one of the estimated 44,299 persons living with HIV currently in the state. I'm from Adamawa State, mother of five, a positive HIV mother, and um, I'm proud to be a HIV positive mother. Why? Because me being a positive mother and having a negative children is a priority to me because it gives me more hope and joy. Um, since I know my status, in the early stage, it was somehow, it's horrible. But along the line, it's something, it's like a school. You cry before you will learn. But as soon as you learn about what took you to school, then you will know where you are going. Because being HIV positive is not the end of life. It's the beginning of life, if you understand it. Why I say so? Because if you can adhere to your medication, you can take your medication the way you are asked to. You will see that all the burdens, all the pains, all the sorrows it comes with, within a twinkle of an eye, it will all vanish. Because you come to understand what you are into and where you are going to. So, I thank God for giving me that privilege, that knowledge, and that sentiment, that thought of living positive. Besides personal medical problems, Hadiza also experienced social problems associated with the disease, such as stigma and discriminatory attitudes. <sighs> stigma is something else. I, I'm not praying for my enemy to be stigmatized. Why? Because I've gone through stigma. It's hell. Because when I was diagnosed HIV positive, the people I mingle with, they run away from me. They don't want me to talk to them. They don't want me to come close to them. They don't, as in, I was just an outcast. Even in my house. If they're in the parlor, if I come to the parlor, everybody will just vanish. My sister-in-law, whenever she see me, she'll just be splitting out her saliva as if I'm smelling. I said to myself, it's better. I keep myself indoor. I think that would be better. But along the way, I come to realize that for me to isolate, isolate myself from them is not going to work. I just try my possible best to make them understand that what I'm going to, I didn't go to market and buy it. And I didn't request for it. It can happen to anybody. It's by faith. You understand? It's by chance. So, me that it happens to me, it's not that God don't like me. God loves me more than them. Because me being HIV positive, I'm more valuable than them. Because I'm federal government property. How many times have the, the, the government gave them paracetamol for free? How many times did the government ask them to come to the lab for their medical checkup for free? How many times did the government send for beverages for them so that they will boost their immune for free? But me, I have that access. So I later on said, I should not be like them. Let me come out and start my awareness. As I start the awareness, many of them came back to me. They embraced me. And 
we interact more than before. Hadiza did not only overcome her fear and other barriers, but enrolled in the Mentor Mother program as a frontline healthcare worker in understaffed health centers and within communities. I talk to myself, if me being a positive mother will give birth to a negative baby or children, why wouldn't I impact in other women? Why wouldn't I come close to them, bring them close to me, rub minds together, be their sister's keeper? And I try it. There is up and downs because before you get someone to get open to you, it's very difficult. But if you are patient enough, it's as simple as drinking water. So, being a mentor mother, I'm proud of it because it pays. The prayers, the visiting, the chatting, all those things. We became, as in, I became someone that has a lot of family. Anywhere I go to, I'm humbled and honored. Anywhere I go to, they receive me with kind gesture. You understand? And I'm happy about it. Why? Because being with them is the most happiest thing in my life. While I'm together with them, I learn from them, they learn from me. I came for normal uh, antenatal. So when I came, I, I was tested because when you come for antenatal, they will do general tests for you. So they tested me and the doctor confirmed that I was uh, HIV positive. Was shocking, surprising, I was just depressed. But the doctors encouraged me. They told me that this virus doesn't kill. As far as you stay, you abide by the rules. You don't have anything to worry about. I've been taking my drugs regularly as directed by my doctors. I don't have any problem. I make sure that I eat healthy food for my babies. And my babies are very healthy. They are normal without any infection of the virus. The agents that you be assigned to are very supportive. Her name is Adiza. Adiza is very, has been very supportive. Then she will be the one to call you to come and take your drugs. And it's for free. You just come. She will do everything. You sit down on your own. She will go, she will go downstairs, do everything, and bring the drugs for you. You will not pay any dime. If, you are, if they test you, they found out that this woman is tested and she's positive. The first person they call is me. They call my office. I come downstairs. They give me the folder. I cancel the patient, talk to the patient, ask them some questions. After that, I take them back to the doctor. The doctor will evaluate them, fill in the clinical evaluation form. From there, they'll ask the woman, you know what you are carrying, you are pregnant. So you don't have to decide on you will do or not. You will take your medication or not. You just have to start here and then. You understand? There and then you have to start. So most of the women, I thank God, they accept. So after the test, place them on medication. We open a folder because we have our units, the ART units. We open the folder for them. We keep on checking on them. Sometimes we go home visit. Sometimes we call them on phone. Sometimes they will come to the facility. They will look for us. So we interact. They ask us questions. We answer them. What is beyond us? We have our ART focal person. We meet the doctor. What we don't understand, he explains to us. What we understand, if there is something to chip in, he will add his own so that we have another, as in more knowledge to talk to them. I was not aware of it, but when I went for antenatal, I discovered it, and from there I was putting on drugs so that my babies in my womb would not be affected. So that's how I keep on going on drugs, and when I came for delivery, they canceled me and the baby. So the baby was safe through the antenatal and the advices 
and the drugs I've been taking to make sure the baby is, is well. It is a good advice for all women, not only pregnant women, but more especially pregnant women should go for antenatal. It is there that they, they will know their, their status and they will know how to take care of their baby. Once you don't go for antenatal, you don't know your, you will not know your problem and the baby will be affected. But if you go for it, if you know it, you will stop, they will stop it from happening. Under me so far now, I have 87 women that are under my care and I have more because I've not entered them into the register but so far I have almost 90, 90 women now under my care and in this 90 there's just few of them that are not delivered but almost 98 percent of them have put to bed and their babies are healthy they are negative and the mothers are surprised most of them are virally not detected that is their viral load is not detected you understand so with those women on me gives me gives me more courage gives me more strength gives me more joy in helping them because being a little there is the small facility we are having and i have this kind of women under me and they open up to me i think is a great thing is a great joy and the women from the beginning they are stubborn but along the line they are the most simplest women i have had under my care i use myself as an example to them I normally create sign, take them out in you know, charts. I go to their houses, they come to my house. We meet in the facility, we meet in the support group. They are okay. So with that, they gave me the grace and the ability to achieve my aim. Because without, without their support, I would have not made it. A word of advice to Nigerians. I think we women, the best thing we should do is try and be sincere can know our status before serious relationship why because if we know our status let's assume the wife the woman is positive while the woman is negative the wife should not hide it from the man because i have cases like that that women are positive and the men they want to marry is negative but they don't want the men to know Along the way, the man will be a career. If we can try our best with the generation we are into, with the life we are into, I know the country is hard, but let's take our anxiety out of our way. Let's try and think about our future. Let's be sincere and faithful to each other. I know for me to say we should zip up, it's not going to work. But let's use the ABC method. If we can't abstain, be consistent of using condom. There are condoms. It's affordable. It's available. We have female condoms. We have male condoms. At least it will help us in preventing others or by spreading the virus. And we should always, always, every three, three months, we should always try and check our status for the negative ones. For the positive ones, let's adhere. Let's take our medication as, as they told us, as it's supposed to be, so that we will try and be surprised. Our viral load will be surprised. The virus will be less, will be calm, will be cool so that it will not spread up and will bring it out to others. I think that will be the best. Like Hadiza Abanu, we should play our role in the reduction of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, as well as curb the high rate of new infections among women in the country. Ah, ah, sister! Ah, where you they rush, they go like?
like this now. Take mm. a easy now. Now hospital where they go to do HIV test. Hmm. Now everything you do HIV test. Before you carry belly, you do HIV test. Now you they rush go do another HIV test. What you they find? You go see a more. No be so, my sister. Eh? HIV test no be bad thing. Now make I know my status so that no matter the result, my picking no go get HIV. Eh? HIV fee pass from mama to picking. Yes, yeah, so during pregnancy or labor. Or even when we did breastfeed the picking. Yeah. Yes, and my husband they wrote, they come, say, if you go meet me for hospital, we go do the test together. Hey, your husband, my man, he be. <laughs> but wait, oh, we're not fear. What if the results come out positive? Fear it now. HIV no be death sentence. And medicine don't get to take manager. See, nowadays people will get HIV. They live their life normal like everybody else. You should say I'm not gonna follow you, go do my own soul. What till you wait for now? Come make me go, Jare. With quick action, we fit stop this HIV worker from Mama to Peking. Go do your own HIV test today. States Agencies for the Control of AIDS, SACA, are created to mimic the structure, function and mechanism of the national body, NACA, but are limited to coordinating the HIV response within the states. The Chief Executive Officer of the Lagos State AIDS Control Agency, Dr. Mansura Tadeleke, gives a brief background of the agency. The Lagos State AIDS Control Agency was established in the year 2001. Before we were established, we started out as a foundation, HIV and AIDS foundation. That was as far back as 1999. We progressed in 2000, but by 2001, we were established. What were we established for? Following the index case that we had in the year 1986, you remember it was in Lagos State, which is over 40 years ago. So the government decided that they should create the Lagos State AIDS Control, which even precedes the National AIDS Control Agency. That so that we can look at how we can reduce the incidence of HIV and AIDS in Lagos State and help to mitigate the effects it already had on those inf infected and affected by the HIV. Dr. Adeleke also spoke on the state's peculiarities. Constantly we have a daily influx. Look at Lagos State. We have the smallest in terms of land mass, our size. I'm sure we're less than 5,000 square meters. I think we're about 3,500 and something. But look at our population. We're over 24 million and every day people keep coming into Lagos. So even when we've sorted out the response, you know that every day people are coming. We have border areas. We have about eight LGAs that we share borders with other states. So even if our response is strong and the states, others, the border areas, are weak. You know that there will be an influx and then you'll create it. So those are our peculiarities, but we constantly work on it. She then enumerated some of the state's HIV response efforts. We are trying to key into even the global target, you know, that we're saying we want to attain global epidemic control of HIV by 2025 and we want to eradicate completely new infections by 2030. So what are we doing? As far back as, you know, we've been created, Lagos State has been proactive and I'm sure we're one of the first states that started the anti-stigma law which was promulgated May 25th of 2007. So basically we try our best that, you know, we should implement the sanctions associated with anyone found violating the rules, you know, stigmatizing HIV patients. So we do a lot of that and then we collaborate with line ministries. We have the strong support of the Ministry of Justice so that any client found that has been stigmatized will go through that. We also focus strongly on prevention of mother-to-child transmission. We've even gone as far as starting up the community PMTCT. And we've done a lot of sensitization, especially the traditional birth attendants. We continue to focus on sensitization of the religious leaders as well, because you know how Nigerians were big on religion. We also focus on capacity building of the private sector. 
You know that the private sector offer about 60 to 70 percent of health services. So if we don't carry them along in the response, there's nothing we can achieve. So basically, we also partner with the Nigerian Business Coalition Against AIDS, NIBUCA. So they give us, you know, the organized private sector. We train them, we sensitize them, especially on the national HIV workplace policy document. So we remind them of all the rights that PLs have, you know, so that there will be no stigma. We focus on the anti-stigma law as well. We continue to train them about it. And then we just um, deepen the collaborations we have with the private sector, just looking at sustainability, because that's what we're big on in Lagos State. Collaboration with NACA, according to the CEO of the Lagos State AIDS Control Agency, has been cordial. The National AIDS Control Agency, well, we have a good handshake with them. They have zonal offices in Lagos. So all the programs that we do, we coordinate, we, we partner with the NACA. Even recent, last year, they also did an empowerment. and We were a part of it as well, where they empowered about 185 youth with capacity building, POP hairdressing. So we work together. We have a good handshake with NACA. And you do remember that with the biggest household survey that was carried out, the NAI study in the year 2018, it was from support of NACA, the Federal Ministry of Health, you know, FOPEP and all of that. So basically that has really helped in Lagos State because you do know that it's the first of its kind that we did in um, Sub-Saharan Africa where Lagos State disaggregated our own data into LGAs. So all of these things I'm saying to you, we actually do targeted interventions. We know where the highest burden is and we don't rest on our oars. We continue to package interventions, strategies that will be tailored to, you know, bring down the burden in those particular LGAs. So we would say that we've done a lot. I mean, NACA has helped us further ahead in terms of, you know, targeted interventions to our LGAs. The Lagos State AIDS Control Agency is poised to contribute its quota to the national response and achieving HIV epidemic control by 2030. What we want people to know is that there is an act against HIV stigma and discrimination. And the act uh, has two components. There is the jail component, there is the fine component of it. So it can be both, actually, depending on the gravity. People with HIV live normal life. Um, they work as, uh, as productive as any member of the community. And um, among them are intelligent people, hardworking people. Why should we discriminate against them? If we stigmatize people and we discriminate, it puts them away from our hospitals. It prevents them from coming to our facility to know their status. It prevents them from coming to our facilities to take these medications that are very helpful. So stigma is a number one enemy for us in fighting um, HIV disease and in controlling HIV disease. And we will be all out against it. For more information on HIV and AIDS and related diseases, or to report suspected cases of stigma and discrimination, violence and human rights violation, please call the National Call Centre toll-free on 6222. Reach us via social media at National Call Centre or email callcentre at naca.gov.ng and visit our website on naca.gov.ng.